We'll see if it comes up that way. Oh yeah. Look who we got here. Right there. In the house. No notifications in, yet. In the provost truck. No, nobody's even on here yet. If you're yeah, watching a replay, there here it he is. is. Right there. There it is. Oh, the thumbnail is like one of your... Look at the thumbnail. It's like one of your racing deals. Oh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good picture of you. Race, the racing deal. Yeah. Yeah, we got Snore Lord, so... And I'm hiding out of camera. Right here. He's staring at my coffee pot. Yeah. 1850. 1850. Daniel Adami is actually first this time. You got five people in here. Yeah, we're gaining. So we're gaining. Provost has an announcement. He is handing this truck over to me. He's retiring. And uh, uh, thank you, Provost. I really appreciate that. So we got to figure out the logistics. Jeff, I'll be giving you a call. And. Uh, yeah, we'll have to get the ELD thing figured out. Yeah. What's wrong with that ELD? <laughs> Change it over to, to uh, Snorlord. Can you hear that reefer running? I don't know. We have the APU going. Steve's going to read comments because my other phone's Same. dead, I think. All right. You got Daniel Adami, Tiffany Morgenstern. Sim Dupras, John Dolalai, Dolahai, Dolahai, uh, Hill Rider TV, Jason Perry, Big Brother, Chucky, Spooby, Sasa Dini, I don't know if I brought that phone. Uh oh, Provost lost his phone. Kimasabi, Grafton. What are you doing? I did. I could have left it in my car. So I can't even look at it if I wanted to. So there's that. There you go, you can read comments. Where are y'all at, says John Thawhite. We're right here. Gotcha. Right there. Just come back and cruise around in the anti Porsche, says Ratman. <laughs> you should have cruised up here. We're not far from you. Yeah, man, we want to see that Lambo. And bring some tacos. You, know, you can read the comments up there. I got this one. Oh, you got, he's, he's nifty. He's got two phones with him. I lost one. Eugene Waller. Hey, 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 Mr. Provost, let me borrow a thousand. No problem. No yeah, we, problem. We saw your tweet, tweet, Rat Man, showing off your little go mobile air. I like that car. You gotta let me take it out and do some hot laps. Might need a set of tires after I get done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Just got the notification that your bid was too high, 600 on 212 mile low. Yeah, that's way of the way of the day. Which uh, broker was that there, Eddie? That's JB Hunt, and that's par for the course. JB Hunt, you're gonna be lucky to get 400 for that load. They haven't, they don't budge right now. They're not budging. Yeah. So that, you know what that means? I'm not pulling your stuff. Yeah. You can say curse words, it's your channel. Yeah, I can. Uber. Uber late posted load. Wow, usually an Uber late posted for pickup same day. Because usually they, they pay on those. You, you can call them, too. Call them and say, yeah, no. I'll do it for this. Mimi Toys, good day. 
Good day. Look who we got. We got a special guest. The Snore Lord. Yeah. We're here barely working. I work today. I will be working today. I don't leave out till tonight. Yeah, you, I was working while you were sleeping. And you're going to be working while I'm sleeping. As long as I'm not working while I'm sleeping, we're good. Coyote's credit score dropped into the 50s. Beware. Coyote. Doesn't UPS own Coyote? Yeah. What's Coyote's MC number? Let's look that up. Let's see. What's up, Pigtail? Coyote tail? MC number. I know Coyote was having some problems. 561-135. Coyote had some problems last year and was closing. They were closing offices and so forth, right? In 2019? They're letting people go and everything. But I think UPS owns them. Me and my toys. Gotcha. Factors Network. Stephen Prasinski. Pittsburgh Steve. Just here is happy bystander. Have a good week, fellas. According to Factors Network, it's they're still at 96. So. I couldn't tell you the last time I did a coyote load. Been a while. I used to have a connection there. It was one of my connections, and they left. It's been uh, 24 hours since I've been a coyote. Though. Oh, really? Yeah. I did get the app to finally work again after I uh, deleted it and reinstalled it. Yeah, we had to like create a whole new deal. And I haven't pulled uh, the low one for so long. Now it doesn't put up the prices anymore. Now I just have you can bid on this. Does yours still put up prices? Days to pay his way up to Pittsburgh Steve, just here, happy bystander. Pale Rider TV, Snow Lord is making the rounds as guest co-host. I am, man. I'm, I'm, my channel's shot, so I've been trying to ruin everybody else's channels, too. So. That's their DAT score. Uh, the DAT. Yeah. The 50 is the DAT, because I checked Factors Network, and that's... Uh, I want to say one, two, three. Right out the window, pale rider. <laughs> Coyote's bidding process is a joke. Always has been. You, still, you gotta call him. You gotta get a, you gotta find a go-getter there. That's been there for a while. And stick with him. I had that one go-getter girl at, uh, Was she at? No, she was with Coyote. That's the girl. Yeah, and she quit and started her own factoring company. Yeah, Marty, is it possible to haul Coyote load only throughout the year? Yeah, if you're not picky about where you want to go, you know, and if you got a good rep. I mean, the way Coyote works, you bid on the app, but you only go through one person. Yeah, that's um, your person forever. Yeah, unless they quit or something like that, but. But yeah, if you're not picking, I mean, you can pick, pick any, pick any broker and work for only that one broker through the whole year. Bruce Phelps, hello from New Hampshire. Marty Sino, Eddie, it's hard for me to understand what you're going through because I haul tanker. Ah. Oh. You do a dedicated fuel or milk or yeah. something not affected by COVID-19? Yeah, what are you doing, Marty? What 
kind of tank yanking are you doing? Thank you, Steven. I do have my uh, beer trimmer here, Steve. What's that? I'll show you. <laughs> I, I can show it to you in use. Uh, we'll get you all purdied up so you go home and your wife will be like, who are you? Uh, she, she'd be mad. She, she would hunt you down. Who are you? What'd you do with Steve? She, she will hunt you down. No, we'll leave it nice and long everything. We'll just trim it up. Oh. Uh, you got a little bit to catch up with. I trim it down. I, this is like, I had it down almost nothing. This is a week. <laughs> I shaved in here though the other day. I was one of them ones that couldn't even grow a mustache till I was 30. <laughs> Don't you dare touch that beard. I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> that's got that's got COVID-19 all in it, stuck it everywhere. Yeah, it does. That is friggin' long. That's what, three years? Two. Two years? See, I, 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 I had a, this magic spell that allowed me for every pound that I lost on my weight, I gained beard. So I lost a hundred something pounds and then gained like about five back on the beard. Steve must be lost. Yeah, he's lost. Why does Kaislin say I'm lost? And hey, Kaislin. Still in my normal running area. I love his dog. Because last time I was hanging out with him, the dog was just giving him nut shot after nut shot after nut shot. And I was <laughs> like, this is the best dog ever. My favorite part of his dog is that when he uh, eats the bill of ladings. Oh, dog does that? Yeah. Kaisley's dog did that one time. <laughs> Oops. Wait. Are you uh, back to work yet, Kaislin? I know Brian is. Eddie Drotter says he's going through what 90% of owner operators are going through. What's that? Bunch of crap. <laughs> What's that? I'm not going through anything. Let's see where Kaislin's at. Let's look at stock at 360. Kaislin's been working non-stop. Well, you gotta make up for uh, Thomas Wilkes, Wilson slack, right? Let's see. Pulled hopper bottom before tanker. Kaislin's not working. He's sitting there at the Petro. That's not working, Kaislin. Busted, Kaislin. Yeah. I swear. A little creepy there, Stephen P. What'd Stephen P. say? Don't you dare touch that beard. Oh. Check MC561135 on that. Credit score is 54. DTB is 57. Oh, wow. Maybe uh, one, two, three is behind on that. The, a lot of uh, brokers are going to net 60. So, and if there's any time to use a factoring company, it's now trying to get non recourse because you're going to start seeing the brokers, you know, they're suffering just as much as we are, if not more. That's all the more time not to deal with those uh, small third rate brokers. Which I don't do anyway. You know that's my MO. Yeah. Still interested in taking over Provost Truck Snorlord after retirement, of course. Hell yeah, I would I would take this truck in a second. Man, there's so much room in this truck. I mean it's unbelievably comfortable. Yes, I am wearing shorts, Hail Rider. It's hot out. It's hot down here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Florida hot though yet. 
not Florida hot yet. I know my truck's probably hot. APU is probably like, hey, the AC, you don't need that. I tell you what, you hang, you hang out in Florida and you know, it's like 85 to 90 and you know, it's, it's not hot, but it feels warm and then it gets 70 at night and you're looking for a sweater. 80 here in Ohio. What's better engine, Volvo or Cummins? Well, it's a matter of opinion. Yeah, almost all the engines are the same. The Cummins are gonna have better luck getting work done on it. Um, you don't have to take it to a dealership, but, but uh, I don't know, I've had, the only engine I've never relied on was a Detroit. That's it. I've had Volvo, I've had Cummins, I've had Packard. Uh, I've had even a Caterpillar for a minute, like, like a month. My Freightliner had the Detroit, the DD13. And that was, that's got 560,000 on it, right? And that's, uh, the engine was great. Everything else around it stinks. Volvo less problems. Uh, everything has problems. It's mechanical. The the part that I would probably look at more than the engine is the after treatment system. Yeah. Because that can be just as expensive as maintaining the engine, if not more. So, the new Cummins X15's got a lot of the issues of the older ones resolved. I know Volvo has, like, you didn't, like, actually idle this truck, right? Pretty much? Yeah, oh yeah. Whereas the older DF systems, you don't want to idle them at all. I try not to. It's just burning fuel. What do you say about Mac Anthem? We were just talking about them. They're cool. I like how they look. Um... I know when Jeff was thinking about getting one, he had, he did a little tour of the truck. I can hang with it. I mean, it's not as roomy as this thing, but I'm sure it's not bad. Kind of looks like a truck out of uh, Transformers or something, you know? Kind of futuristic, cool. I don't know how fuel efficient it is. I don't know if those aero actually works on that truck. I don't know. But I have a friend that would tell me that their whole fleet what they're averaging if I want to look into it. If, you know, I can't afford any truck. Chucky's got 588.5. Fossil Con, Audi Provost Motorsports. What's up? Volvo is top of the line with emissions. Yeah, and you know, Salty was on here. I was talking to Salty earlier, and they were talking about one box. And you always hear about twelve thousand dollar one boxes. If you go somewhere with a Freightliner and they tell you, you need a twelve thousand dollar one box, tell them you need to hire new mechanics. Because I all but rebuilt the one box on my Freightliner. I mean, it's it's serviceable. The, you can get every piece separately. Just because you're an idiot, can't figure it out, I got to spend 12 grand? Right? Pretty much. Yeah. Right. And, I, and how many times have we heard that story over the last, over the years? A lot. Yeah. Not uh, a day with the bowl. Huh? The day you still have your old Freightliner still? Sure do. Sure do. Look at Marty, he's trying to trigger, like he thinks he's on James's channel. I'd rather have any Max Force than a Cummins. <laughs> he also likes to give himself paper cuts on his tongue and then gargle lemon juice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Right, Marty? Because I know James likes to do that. <laughs> Daryl Dotson says, went and seen one yesterday. The Anthem is small in the bunk space. It's tight. I compared it to the Volvo night and day. Yeah, well, look at us right here. I'm, I'm literally got my feet stretched out, and I'm not even halfway past the refrigerator. We've had six people in this truck. Yeah, we've had six people in it, and comfortably. 
Yeah, we weren't all like, uh, get away from it. Because the front seats swivel. We yeah. can make them face this way. And, and I actually had the freezer in there. I was taking up a lot of, but I got a lot of garbage in there right now. Water and iced tea and stuff like that. Uh, next time we do that, I'll clear out underneath there. I had to take the freezer out because this freezer is pretty good size. That's this freezer. And I was just taking too much food with me. So I'd be on the road for two, three weeks and never even get to the food in the, the other freezer. Huh. Yeah, my fridge is a lot smaller, so. Oh, we miss. We're way behind. So yeah, Daryl, I've never been inside one of Mac Anthems. I was, I looked at them briefly, but I never went inside one. I never drove it. I, Max forces are junk, says Big John. Volvo, many detail made in China. It's not good. Well, there's the latches they use for these uh, cabinets and stuff. There, whoever made them, it's not very good. Besides that, I really haven't had. I really don't have any complaints. I mean, things are going to happen to any truck mechanically. I mean, it's just it's mechanical. Some something, something's going to happen. But these cheap plastic latches, I think every one of them has, has broken, and two of them are broke right now. I stick my my finger up into the drawer to open it. Because <laughs> not only is it a plastic, fantastic plastic crap, mm -hmm. it's eighty dollars. My latches on my truck, I, I gotta slam everything. I have to slam them. Because the part that opens it, the part that's screwy. Yeah, those, that one and that one and the top, the top one and that one broke the first week I had the truck. Uh, let's see. Here's this. This must be a question for Steve. What's up? Did you get the air scoop for the trailer? Oh, are you talking about up on the top of the Volvo? Is that what you're talking about? I can show that. Oh, I said show. Nothing wrong with Max Force, it's the after trimming that messes things up. Mostly, you know, that, that's the thing. I've noticed that, you know, they, they built these engines to go further. It's the after treatments that are the variables on these trucks now. You yeah, know, yeah. and the external parts like AC compressor or the turbo or air compressor, you know, that kind of thing. You know, so no matter what truck you get, it's warranty 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 and then save like hell to you know to cover all the non-warranty stuff that yeah, should save like hell anyways anyway period trucker's table Volvo 78860 are the Cadillac of basic factory trucks when it comes to space and comfort yeah people are asking about your old truck it's the second question about that What's your use, or what do you do with your old truck? Pick up or use for your race team? Park or use for your race team? Yeah, both parked and used for the race team. He's going to give that away, too. I mean, yeah, might as well. So, <laughs> in this market, yeah, that's the reason I didn't sell it last year because of uh, the problems going around in 2019 and all the trucks for sale. It lowered the uh, the value of it drastically and then I was thinking no oh, well this year I'll wait till this year and just you know sell it prices can't stay this way forever who knew yeah who knew if you would have told me COVID-19 was coming and the government's going to shut the economy down everything I would have told you you're a damn conspiracy theorist oh Perry was talking about me 
No, I have, I haven't done anything in the trailer. I, I'm just, you know, Provost and I were talking about that today. Getting to California is a challenge. Like we looked at a 200 mile radius of Jacksonville, Florida, where he was going to be, to a 200 mile radius of, uh, was it Sacramento? And there was two loads for the entire week. So the freight is coming out of California now. It's actually pretty good, but getting there is the challenge and no one's going to pay to go out there because they know they're going to get it coming out. So it's, it's like an opposite of a dead end area. But no, I don't have my scoop yet. I don't. Even, I haven't even priced them yet. But when the pistachios and the pecans start coming in, it'll be worth getting out there. Because people will be buying them at the grocery store, so I, I won't see any... Uh, you won't be seeing a slowdown of volume of that. No. Get some baby proof latches. Walmart use them to hold the drawer shut. No, the drawers are shut. They work. That part works spectacular. It's uh, the part where you grab it with your hand. It's plastic and it pushes on the lever that releases the latch, right? So. I mean, it shuts fine, stays shut. It's just a little piece of plastic that reaches up in there and pushes on the lever. Fantastic plastic. So now I just stick my finger up in there and open it up. I don't care. My wife will probably go crazy and make me buy the latches, but. There you go, Perry. Anthony Blackbeard is in the house. Probably missed like 10 comments though. Didn't oh, I? You're oh. supposed to be moderating the comments. Oh, okay. How long do watermelons run out of Florida? Middle of June? I don't know because uh, I don't pull them. I don't know. I've never done any produce loads out of Florida. You, you could got, have them. You got vents on your trailer? Do I have vents? No. Oh, so you can't haul them in. I don't want to. In my country, in Ukraine, Volvo is the standard of reliability, and you somehow do not like Volvo. I myself work on 1997 man F2000 truck. I have no issues against the Volvo. You obviously don't have issues with the Volvo. No. Out of was great. The question wasn't how much the broker gets, it was how quick he pays. Right, I thought we addressed that. And we know, we don't care how much the brokers make. We, we don't care. Stephen, I just talked about that earlier, about how do you solve that problem? Get your own freight. Get your own shipper. And you're saying, well, that's hard. How do we do that? That's why we have brokers. Donuts go a long way. Give a broker oh. donuts. Send them donuts? Yeah. Yeah. Trucker's table says his drawers don't shut. He uses safety latches. But the problems with Volvo is that their maintenance is very expensive. It's like that with all the trucks. I mean, you, you can buy a, a part with Packard, it's the size of this box, and pay 300 bucks for it. And you can't get it OEM, so. So it, it's, you know, then it's another labor. And that, that's the thing. If you buy a Volvo with a Volvo engine, you got to take it to the dealer. If you buy a Peterbilt at Kenworth with the pack orange and you have to take it to a dealer. Cummins, Detroit, there's a lot more shops that don't have to specialize in that particular brand of truck that you can take it to. But, you know, if you need other work on the truck, you can't take it there. So it, it's, most trucks cost anywhere between ten dollars and $15,000 a year to maintain and, and repairs. 
whether you got a warranty or not. I have a friend of mine who has a full blown warranty on a Freightliner, and he's already he's he put twelve thousand into his truck last year. You know, you know what my maintenance per mile cost was last year on this truck? What? Take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. Maintenance cost for last year on this Volvo. Eight cents. No. Was that two fifty a mile out of Florida this year, Eddie? No. It was less than two cents. Dang. I was trying to get it at zero, but I had to do oil changes, right? So. There, there are people that will argue that it's actually almost the same price to run a new truck as is an old truck, if not cheaper to run a new truck. Would you agree with that? Yeah, because tell me why. Because... Like my truck's got 628,000 miles on it. And my payments are, okay, we're gonna do math, everybody, math, okay? But math is hard. Math is hard. So my payments are 1,600 a month, okay? If I have a $12,000 repair, which is, you know, could be the after treatment, turbo, whatever. Um, so my truck payments comes out to $19,200 a year. If I add another 12, let's just add another 10,000. That's what I average every year on my truck. That's $29,200. Divide that by 12, that's $24,33 a month. And you probably have more revenue because you wouldn't be broke down. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This truck spent a bunch of warranty time in the shop this year. But yeah. It's been running good. How, how do you figure out your cost per mile, big Houston ass? Really? You should know that. I know. Really, big John? John, what are you doing? I think he just, you know. He, I think he's messing with me. Or you. Vents and plywood line roof is all you need to haul. Houston was close. He said two. It was. Yeah, it was just it was less than two, but over one. Blackbeard, twelve cents per mile. No way. America first, thirty. Three cents. Dry van. Twenty-five cents a mile. That's supposed to say save up. Save that up until you can buy a new truck. Here you go. Chucky was close. Are you kidding me, Provost? I was trying for zero. Zero. That's what you get for changing oil, duh. I do it myself, right? Uh oh, Ratman sending us an image. Yeah, you can walk, read the comments on that one. Whoops. I was all comfy. He's messing up the program. Uh, Benson plywood line roof is all you need to haul veggies. Yeah, my trailer has an aluminum roof. No plywood walls. It has the <laughs> composite walls. The skeleton's watching us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got too much time in your hand, Terry. He's got the best man cave ever. That's his man cave. Oh, that's his man cave? Yeah. How come we we can't be more than a half hour from there right now, right? I don't know. It depends on traffic. This is COVID-19. There's no traffic. No. Isn't Dallas shut down for the most part? No. I, so, so Ratman, how's the traffic? Bring us some tacos. Scania is going to be Scania, Scania. How do you say that? Is it Scania? Yes. It's, being, it's going to be sold in the USA soon. They're cool. 
some of the Volvos that look like that kind of thing. Oh man, I can't wait till all the Billy Big Riggers put the heat on those trucks. Porsche mechanics doing maintenance on a Volvo. Surprised it's not going 100 mile per hour. It won't go 100 mile an hour. He's I, tried. I've had the, uh, I had the pedal. The only thing I had done is I had the pedal governed to 75 mile an hour. I figured that's as fast as you want to go, right? Yeah, those tires, tires on a big truck only rated to... 75. 75, yeah. I hear Gary got a new truck. Oh, uh, new to him? Because Pop-Pop isn't dishing out any money, that's for sure. Brent may ask where we're at, so I told him. Oh, okay. Do you hold reefer or dry band? Uh, dry band. The reefer you might hear or may not hear is, is Peterbilt next to us. Billy Big Rieger. Yeah. I'm laughing all the way to the bank. I probably get double the fuel economy that thing gets. Right? What yeah. do you think he averages? Five? Five, yeah. Maybe so I'm not getting double. Not a good thing. doing a math for another YouTuber about fuel economy and paying how much, you know, savings it is. Well, right now, the fuel's literally a dollar a gallon cheaper than it was last year. So, it's kind of out of the equation. But when I bought this, I mean, it would literally make the truck payment. So this other YouTuber saying, yeah, but you know, that's only this amount of money off of this truck. And I was like, no dude, times that by four years. How much did you save over four years? Yeah. He's like, oh. Math is hard. Math is hard. Math is hard. I love all those things on Facebook where they have like a picture of a snowman plus a snowman equals this and that, da, 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 da. And then at the bottom, They'll have a snowman plus this times that. And you always got to do the rules of math first, right? You do the multiplication, then you do the addition. That's the answer to all those things. I, I know what you're talking about, but I, I'd scroll right past that crap. Like, oh, do you? Yeah. It's like, I'm not doing math with snowmen. What the hell? Yeah. I want to see stupid memes of President Trump <laughs> and the broker pages. Yeah, Gary got a 660, T660. He went from a one non-room truck to a second non-room truck. Why did you do that? You didn't know Gary got a truck? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not included in that, uh, that eight hour a day uh, conference call they have going every day, sometimes. Oh, NASCAR's on. Is there anybody in the crowd? I don't know. The Peterbilt's kind of blocking my antenna and it's messing up our view. Those cars are less than six foot apart. Well, no social distancing there. I'm just saying. Yes, new to him. Big Q since on Facebook. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like here. Tell the guy I can hear him from the Netherlands. <laughs> Have I been to Utah? Hell yeah. It's beautiful. I don't go there in the winter time though. Only in the summer. Man, it's across the 80 there. Just beautiful. There you go. It looks the same as the old truck. It's the same paint job as the the, it, I mean, it looks the same. Let's see if we can find a picture of his old truck. Do a side by side. Trucker Stable says sensing ejector change. He's getting 7.7 .7 miles per gallon. That's better than the 5.5 he was getting. Ah, good. So, after a year, if you if you were to do your math there, Triple T, which I know you don't. 
but if you do your math, I bet you the fuel savings over a course of a year will pay for those injectors. Yeah, yeah, two, even at, because he runs, he runs pretty hard. So even at two dollars a gallon, yeah, those injectors with that fuel saving should be paid for in three months. Well, yeah, there you go. So good on you, Mr. Mr. Triple T. Eddie Trotter, gotta go cut the grass. So you have people for that? I got people for that. So I didn't have people for that in my house in New Jersey because it was too much grass. We have teenagers for that. So yeah, I have people too. I've got people too, man. I'm the big, I'm the big shot as well. He's got people. I got people. You got people. We all got. We got people. people. We got, we got our shit together. We got, we got people. Who is your logbook service provider? Keep trucking. Keep trucking. The white provost. Hey, what's up, white? Look. Snore Lord. What's the most beautiful state you've visited? Utah. <laughs> I don't know, that's a toss up. I would say Montana for me. Or the Hatchapi Mountains. I like that. That's that's really nice, but I don't know. You've caught Utah so you you summed it up when you were telling James about it. There's so many postcard images right out of your windshield mm -hmm. until you get down into the salt. Yeah, Montana though. I I did six. I did a six stopper of fireworks, and I was like driving on people's farms, and it was awesome. And and like there was some like US 10 in Montana is a gravel road. And and it was just like it was perfect. I mean, I went in June. That that's the trick. Go to Montana in June. It's it's a lot prettier. But and it's kind of like Salt Lake. Every every everywhere you look, there's there's a mountain in your background. You know? Isn't that the window though? June, July, and that's it. Mm, pretty much. Yeah. I think there's snow in August, right? Yeah. Richard Davis did the math that I did in my head. And I was, he said 12,000 a year and 120,000 miles a year. And I said, how long to pay back the, the four three grand? Months. Yeah, three three months. months, yeah. Bam! <laughs> Bam, wife, I got the math right. I'm still trying to figure out math. Digging the office, guys. Very nice. Yeah, we dig it too. Upstate Montana is beautiful as well. Yep. That's a head hole market, not a back hole market. So, you know what that means for me. Scanning can do eight miles per gallon. I do eight. I, I think I'm averaging 8.5 light time, and I haul ass. Today wasn't so good. It started off because I'm heavy, and I started off in the mountains near his house. And I think at one point I saw 6.5, and it slowly crept up. And I think I'm just below eight right now. But I was I had my foot to the floor for eight straight hours, up and down mountains, and then 75 mile an hour all down through here. So yeah. I think if, if they if they start building Scania's in, in America, they're gonna they're gonna spec those for Americans. So they may not be the same exact trucks, you know, that they have in Europe. But we have a lot of different terrains and conditions that, you know, it depends on what their use is too. I mean, if they're gonna be light haul or they're gonna be light duty, heavy haul, you know, that kind of thing. Plus, don't they have like a really short wheelbase? I mean, well, it'd be yeah. really good for maneuvering around and parking, but out on America highways going 75 mile an hour, and like up and down the mountain ranges. Yeah. And you think that trailer would just push that thing wherever it wanted to? Probably. I mean, there's there's a 
like if you go Laredo, you can see some of those canyons. You know, they got a couple of Mexicans down there got them. Holland okay. Fireworks is a hazard material low 1.4. That is absolutely correct, Marty. They're going to have walk-up sleepers. What's your preference for overnighters? Rest stops or truck stops? Uh, that depends. Um, depends on the rest. Like, the rest areas in Florida are pretty big. Um, there's like two rest areas over there off of I-70, just east of uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Those are huge. Those yeah. are nice. So I prefer that. Um, truck stops, it just depends. Like, you know, like, it just depends on the truck stop. Like Carlisle, Pennsylvania, you have the Petro Loves and Flying J there. I hate that Flying J. Get your hood taken off there. Get your hood taken off there. But then, but the Petro, man, you do pretty good. Loves, yeah, it just depends. Never any spots in that Loves. Yeah. So. I think we have our lists, right? We have, uh, and uh, the real super tight, crappy ones may stop and get fuel. Oh, there's a crash already. That, and I just, you missed it. Oh, where? Oh, if they, oh, they show oh, a replay, the I'll tell you. Star, okay. The, uh, I thought you meant out here in the parking lot. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, the real tight, crappy ones, you go in and get fuel and you leave and you go park at a different one. Yeah. But we have our list. They want a Cuban Dotties in Cuba. That's yeah, nice. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good truck stop. We shouldn't be saying this. Everybody's going to go to these. Yeah, don't go to Cuba, Dotties. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Park at the Flying J, the hood removal, right down the street. Watched uh, two trucks burn over there at that Flying J in Sullivan one time. Burn to the ground. And I think I was staying there one night, and you were right down in Cuba, and you were yelling at me, why the hell are you staying there? <laughs> and I was like, and now you understand. What do you mean? Why don't you go to this Dottie's in Cuba? And I was like, I ain't going to that hole in the wall. And I went by there. And yeah, I go there every time now. <laughs> yeah, that Flying J is good for fuel only. That's it. And you know, Dottie's, I didn't, I've taken showers there too. It's it's eight bucks for a shower. And it's super super clean. You know, it's dated. Yeah. That that place is pretty old. But you got all the toy trucks in there you can look at. Yeah. Did you go in there and look at them? Not, well, a couple of years ago I went in there. I, I, this time I didn't. I got out of the truck, did my post trip. I got right back in the truck. Oh, uh, okay. I took a shower at the Flying J up the road on my 30 minute break. major breakdowns the rest of the year just PMs with the, what I've already paid out this year for tires and repairs I'll be double what my payments are but that's only $720 a month it's all about be keeping your costs low you know if, if you're if you're a used truck add the truck payment and the maintenance and repairs on top of that together or more than a new truck then you have to make a decision I, I've already dealt with that once I was paying the Schneider Finance level payments on my Peterbilt when you added it all up together, but I was not getting the luxury of a of a new truck for sure. Yeah, there's another one. Can't do math. All right, so let's say you you had fourteen hundred a month if you average it out for twelve months. Is that what you're saying your maintenance is, and then your payments seven twenty a month. So you could have a $2,200 or $2,120 a month truck payment. You just paid a $2,100 truck payment all this year. There's no such thing And this thing year's as, not over. Yeah, there's no such thing as a paid off truck. Yeah, we started to talk about that and got confused. Yeah. And, and why is that? Because you're either paying a truck payment or you're paying the maintenance. By the time the truck payment's over, it's going to start asking for money. Where if not sooner. And where people get in trouble is when you got a high truck payment and the maintenance. On top of that, that's where that's where a lot of that's where buying a a three year old used eighty thousand truck can really kind of 
kind of get you in trouble. The service classes in Ohio are huge and have showers in them. Oh yeah, I've, I've yeah, that's a good, that's a good On point. 90? You talk about on 90? Uh, 80. Well, it's 80 and 90, right? Yeah, 80. It goes up there? Yeah, but that's a $200 toll to go across. If you take 80 all the way across and go up the uh, Ohio Turnpike. The about truck stops and rest areas. Uh, so yeah. it's really not free, Kaislin. <laughs> it's a $200 shower. Kaislin, they pay your tolls or are you going to pay a toll? So if they, you know how we go across there. We go across 30 and then up. Yeah. They're not paying that toll. What is the truck next to us hauling? Well, something in the refrigerator. I'm going to guess probably ice cream since that uh, thing is like full blast. What is the guy next to you hauling? And I was going to look over. He's hauling that beard around. That's what he's hauling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's, I have been in them service plazas, Casey, and they're nice. And the showers are free. Yeah, you got to have your own towel and scrubbies and all that, though. And they're, they're spotless. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, Kaysel says he goes across 30 and up as well. Yeah, that's the way. Save that toll. Especially now. That's what Steve was asking me a couple weeks ago. When, what's my strategy? And I said, my A number one strategy is no tolls. That's the first thing. Any load with a toll is out. Well, you just blew that out of the water. You just blew 40 bucks coming down here. Yeah. Half of the 40 bucks. <laughs> uh, we're going to run out of battery on this phone. My payments plus maintenance so far this year puts me close to $2,000 a month payment. Well, if you, you just, you, what's $1,400 plus $720? That's not close to $2,000. That's over $2,000. Was it 1400 plus what? 720. 2120. Isn't that what I just said? Yeah. Just did the exact number. You do math your way, I'll do it my way. Who's that? They were checking us out. Who are the two gay guys in the truck? That's why we have a big sleeper comfortable. Europe is 45 cents. Kaislin's like, but they pay my tolls. Kaislin's so special. Kaislin, I'm out, I'm out of coffee, by the way. I don't have one of these fancy fan dangle deals. That's just the shizzle. No keto coffee for Steve. Yeah. I mean, I, my coffee is always keto because I drink it black. How you're supposed to drink it, or we'll revoke your coffee card. Right? Tell them, Pale Rider. <laughs> Hot and black. What, what, what money makes it worthwhile from Elizabeth, New Jersey to LA area? Uh, you're better off going into Pennsylvania. I haven't found anything out of Elizabeth that goes to LA that pays anything. But I have pulled out of Harrisburg and, and Allentown and Pittston, Pennsylvania, which is uh, up by Wilkes Bear, into California. But I never go to the LA basin. I always go to, to the northern part of Cali because that pays more. Oh, Pill Rider said, yep, he's still there. Pill Rider's being shy. He's being very quiet. Did you give Kaysen Kays wants your address so he can send you more coffee? Mm, that's all. Uh, 3,900 plus. When was that? 2018? What do you think of Pale Rider's new format? Oh man, that's the bomb. 
that was if you guys haven't watched Pale Rider's last live stream video where Snorlord, who's the YouTube socialite. How's that? Was that well put? Yeah, I know you wanted to say whore, but go for uh, it. No, socialite. You're like a social butterfly. <laughs> this, this asshole. How am I getting out with that asshole right there? Take a left instead of a right and go around. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody would be parked over there. But if you haven't checked out Pale Riders last Friday night, what, did you change the name of the Pale Rider? I didn't look at the titles. Does it say Friday Night Live or does it say Friday Night... Friday or Night it, Show? Friday Trucking Show or... Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Check it out. Check it out. He had uh, Alex H. and Mahi show on there. And uh, yeah, it was good, to be honest with you. At least the new truck has a warranty on it for a few years. I spent 30000 on my truck in a 10-month period. No one could seem to fix it. A Cummins motor a few years ago bought a new glider. Yeah. Why did you buy a glider? But, yeah, TC Box, this truck is extremely comfortable. I can see why Prolis doesn't mind being out months at a time. I don't go out months at a time. But, but you would. I was out the whole month of February, but that's only because I had to spend 10 days at the racetrack and I was still hauling freight. So I lived in it at the racetrack. My guys lived in the other trailer. Friday night live trucking show. Yeah, that's it. Check it out. I was, I was, uh, glued to my screen the whole time glued to the screen very very good show and I actually called him the next day too and told him that it was a very good show and I don't call Pale Rider a lot but we have spoke a lot the last week you were on the show last week yeah drinking beer and everything drinking beer the wife provost was on there Area. That way you can have a police escort run 100 mile an hour. My truck won't go 100 mile an hour, nor do I think I want to go 100 mile an hour. Imagine blowing a steer at 100 miles an hour. Life is over. Yeah. I'll take my chances in a race car. 140 grand minimum new. It better be Volvo's, not cheapo. I'm, I'm curious to see how low new truck prices will go. I know that Peterbilt Steve was trying to sell a three or a 589. It was like, it had all the bells and whistles and chrome and everything for 147 FET and everything out the door, warranties wow. in place. Where like a year and a half ago, that same truck would probably be in the 160s, you know? And I got a friend of mine that just bought a Volvo, the small, what's the smaller one number? 760. 760 and, and his truck payments are only about $2,100 a month. Wow. So. I know you can, we, I know you can buy the same truck I'm in right now for 30,000 less than I paid for it. Yeah. But I already have it, right? So it is what it is. It was a new 2012 glider for 115000 and new any other model was 150000 So the price is right. A new 2012 glider. What kind of fuel economy are you getting with that, Mr. Davis? I know where you're going. <laughs> We're going to do math. Detroit 60 or something. I get, I get 7.3 and my old one got 5.5. There you go. 
Pastor Chu. Hello, I'm James. Hello, James. I gotta come up with a, a troll account name. And I can't mention any of the ones live on here. Because then you'll know, right? Then what's the sense of having the troll account name? Right. Yeah. But it just made me think of that. I've heard rumors that Red Chicken's got a, a channel. Oh, yeah? You heard rumors? Here's my wife. You can't spell, but you sure know your math. That's correct. I can't spell the simplest of words. For a Porsche driver, he really likes his fuel economy. You could have left that up there. Perry? Yeah, don't retract anything. You can't hurt my feelings. Trust me. Hey, what do you think of them Porsche uh, SUV things? What are they called? Well, now there's two. There's the Cayenne and there's the Macan. The Macan's the, like the smaller one. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen those out there. Yeah, the new ones, the, the new ones are really nice. And the older ones, uh, they were okay. They were a little big. But the turbo was really nice. But that thing, I think, was like 180 grand new for the twin turbo, 650 horsepower. Granny portion. <laughs> Granny portion, the Cayenne. Crap, we used to call them crap wagons because the first ones were real pieces of crap. But the new ones are nice. Richard says, of course, after a few years, the gliders went up in price and there wasn't much difference in price from a non-glider truck. You know why? Because the government put restrictions on them and they can only make so many per year. So the government literally limited what their, their supply and demand deal is so they can charge more. But yeah, most glider kits are not much difference than uh, the new truck prices. I'd be worried about having to get warranty work done at dealership and taking a week or two, even though the parts and labor are free, downtime and lost revenue is concerned. Very true statement. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But Volvo has that thing, if you're on the road, they uh, drop everything, supposedly. I don't know. I haven't, I was on the road, but I checked engine light came on and as I'm sitting there thinking about it I got an email from them your check engine lights on it's nothing to be concerned about but if you want there's a dealer blah 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 just email me back and I'll tell them you're coming and I was like cool but I was like no he said it just needed to be uh, reprogrammed there was a software update blah 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 so waited and now there is like kind of a little quirky problem I'm having with this I bet it's another software update issue that if I let the truck sit for more than a week I go to start it up it won't start because it's saying there's no communication to the transmission so I kill the power turn the power back on now it'll start check engine lights on saying communication issue just to have them look at it at your next service interval and you go to scroll through all the you, unless you can scroll through fault codes right on the dash it'll give you the fault code number and it's showing no fault codes hmm. so I'm sure it's some screwy software thing and then the check engine light goes out after the first day of driving so I don't care software has, has mechanism syndrome Mon am I saying that right Mon just that's a German word I don't you know you're German CPAP no we got the race on right here it's on the TV which race is it CPAP where are they at Darlington right 
but it's like this guy parked next to me is kind of coming in and out because of the uh I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna mess it up. I don't know, I'll show you. Can you see the TV? There. There's the TV. Yeah, we got the race on. Race on. Is there people in the stands? Nope, I didn't see any, but they're not showing a the stance. They just have the in-car driver thing. Harvest, Harvick is second. He's my guy. Cool. Looks like a practice race. And I think they're trying all kinds of new crap with this race. There was no qualifying, no nothing. You drew out of a hat what number you started. So if you're in the back, you just sit back and hope everybody crashes so you can win. Yeah, I was going to watch golf, but that channel stopped coming in. Which ticked me off. When this idiot with this reefer parked next to me, blocks my, he's blocking my uh, reception. I guess we can go over Terry's house and watch it on the, in the man cave, right? Yeah. We'd have to share the chair with the skeleton. No people in the stands, says Richard Davis. Yeah, I guess it's on, just all on TV. Pit crews are wearing helmets. They always wear helmets. If you're over the wall in the hot pit, you have to have fire suit and helmet on. It's the stacks. <laughs> it is. Is that what it is? Probably. I don't know. It's because the thing is a monstrosity. I remember one time I was at that Petro in Carlisle. I got there early, so there's like plenty of parking. This is before the it was paid parking over there. And the Super Bowl was on. I wanted to watch the Super Bowl. So I literally had the TV on in my truck. And I was circling the lot to find the best spot reception. So I settled on a spot out in the middle of nowhere and I was doing really good till till Beavis and Butthead park next to me. I do that all the time. You just have the TV on and you're driving around looking uh, sure I, you well, I gotta do an automatic channel search. Mm -hmm. So I park a certain way and see if I get reception. If I don't, I can move. I've seen Freightliners have a setup like your truck is Freightliner better than Volvo. Depends on your uh, perception there, Marty. I know I have a Freightliner and a Volvo. And this one rides like a car. This thing's spectacular. It's comfortable. I know if you drove, if you just did the drive I just did to get here, right now my back would be sore and I'd be pissed off. Am I either of those? Well, I was a little pissed off. I was a little agitated. Big kind of irritable. Well, I got set off. So do the guys wearing full face helmets have to wear a mask underneath? Well usually they have to wear one of those fireproof balaclavas. Is that what they call those things? Yeah. Where just like your face sticks out. You know just a little like there's just a little hole here. So you, when you're saying you're blah blah blah. Yeah, because that's fire retardant. That's why they, they wear them. Keith wants to know, for the second time, is the 18 coffee, 1850 coffee any good? I got everybody hooked on this crap, right? Yeah, especially a trailblazer. This is the one, the trailblazer. I don't know if that's coming through the right way, upside down, backwards, whatever. Is it coming through the right way? Yeah. Yeah, it is. How about that? Go figure. Trailblazers, like, was there th <clears throat> three or four different blends? Or I think there's only two. I forget what the other one was called. It's like yellow. It's like, I don't know. I tried them all. That's the best one. That one, it's like bean to cup. I should have brought my cup with me. I have cups. I got new ones. I'd say I need a coffee.
I didn't know if you're gonna go lay down or sleep before you gotta get up and drive all night or what are you doing? <laughs> did you sleep in today? Yeah. Oh you did? Yeah. We're gonna do dinner at the I'll treat. I don't think there's a sit down restaurant here, is it? There? There's a uh well we can go they have a Boston market. Yeah, we can do that. If they don't sit down, we bring it back here. Yeah. We got a sit down restaurant right here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I thought you were anti truck stop right now though. I'll walk in with you, you're you're packing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, you know, all the training in the world isn't gonna help me the older I get. Cause my mind's still crazy, but my body is like, where's the walker? <laughs> so that was one of my reasons for not getting a gun, is because chances of if if you're within arm's reach of me it's going to be over in 10 seconds. Uh -huh. And if you shoot me, you better hit an organ. Otherwise, by the time I get to you, it's over in 10 seconds. <laughs> and I'm thinking, but you're an old man now. Yeah. So. I deal with that all the time. It'd be I'm... easier just to pull a gun out and shoot your ass. But <laughs> I haven't had one. I was thinking I haven't had one time in my entire lifetime that I would have pulled a gun. Not one. Yeah, you know, James Best made that point the other day, and you know, here I am. I'm, I made a 4 a.m. delivery, and I thought I was gonna have to bust it out in my own in a, in my own hometown. And probably because I know the area too. Like I know that that dude coming up to my truck was up to no good. So luckily he lived. It, I was using my truck as a weapon more than, but I got like this. Well, I won't, I won't go into details. However, while I was in the gun shop, they have a 12 gauge shotgun now. It's all set up like an AR. It's awesome. See, I would have bought that. I'm, I might go buy it. Yeah. Have it at the house. That that was awesome. It'd be fun to shoot it. Hey? Oh, is my wife still listening? <laughs> Well, she hasn't commented yet. Uh, CPAP wants to know if that coffee was made in 1850. Big John, he drinks 1850 coffee, good stuff. I got him hooked on it too. Yeah, the bag stuff, I can't, I've been to like three or four Walmarts and haven't seen it. Now, now Folgers has this like silk, stuff and I, I have no idea what that's about oh she says we're we're not getting that gun <laughs> if i tell you go buy that gun we're going to buy that gun <laughs> she even like put two exclamation points on that side. <laughs> but not a wife answer this honestly that was a cool shotgun was it not Well, you know, Florida, they have those those snake hunting deals, right? You know, they want you to go out and get all them invasive. Oh, uh, yeah, I was down there. I took, you see the video? I took my wife 10 miles down a dirt road in the Everglades. Oh, I missed that video. And there was all kinds of gators. I was right on top of them. And no knife, no pistol. <laughs> just me thinking when I was a kid, just jump on her back and we're, 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 we're going at it. <laughs> But there was one that was about 20 foot well, I wasn't even messing with. And I was looking for snakes. That's what I was looking for. So I was all over looking for snakes and, and I didn't see one snake, big, small, nothing. And my wife asked me, if you see one of them big giant pythons, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna drag it out in the road and you're gonna video it. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Mossberg, says Scotty. I don't think so. Not with all the people using ARs to shoot places up. Yeah, but it's not an assault rifle. It's just, it's a 12 gauge shotgun. It just looks like an automatic assault rifle. It's not really an assault rifle. It's just a 12 gauge shotgun you shoot buckshot out of. Yeah. So, 
You need to. It's more intimidating than it what it really is. When you go to look at it, you should send me a picture of that. Oh, like okay. So I can. When I, or my wife, when I send her to go buy it, have her take a picture and send it yeah. to you. Yeah, there you go. Go pick that up. I want it there when I get home. <laughs> if you're in one of those stand your ground states, you could shoot someone and say you're afraid for your life if they're wearing a mask. Yeah, that's the thing, man. This guy was wearing a mask, and and I mean, complete dark on the road, wearing a, a dark mask, and, and I mean, and there's like. The guy could have like jumped on my truck, shot me, and, and 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 if I lived, I wouldn't been able to describe this dude at all. You know, and, and most you know banks, you you're not you know my bank, you're not even allowed to wear a hat on your head. You know, I, I imagine what 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 that what kind of changes you got going on with that. You know, my wife says, but can be easily misunderstood for an AR, too dangerous. When somebody's coming in the house, and you pull that, that out. That's exactly what you want them to mistake it for. <laughs> right? Good. You're not lying. That's exact. That's the whole point. That's exactly what you want them to Oh, shit. Mossberg 590 has a 10 round magazine. Yeah. Yeah, this had a, a magazine and, and then the. It got thin and then it had a, a shoulder. The, the shoulder part, the butt clip, or whatever you call it, it had yeah. another clip in there. You can hold another. Round. So you can click click this one out, click, click that one in. I held the regular 12 gauge shells. Oh wow! Yeah, I bought a uh, 20 gauge 470, like tacticals, the 14. I bought that for the house. It, it's pretty cool. 20 gauge 470. Now we looked at so many guns. Shooters World awesome. has every gun known to man in there, and you can palm them all and of course we wiped down with hand sanitizer when we got in the car. Oh it's the eight eight seventy. Ask the woman in Kentucky. Oh that's right, you can't, she's dead. Mrs. Provost, twelve gauge shotguns make big holes in a wall even if you shoot the burglar. Good. Four races, 11 days, Darlington, two in Charlotte. Ah, cool. Yeah, it's 14 inches. I'd be afraid of that thing breaking my wrist. Well, that's why we got the 20 gauge. 20 gauge, man, I've, there's videos of these teenagers, like young, you know, young kids that, that, that were, you know, the father was reporting. Were they holding it or were they one handed it? No, they, they were holding it like that. You know, you can shoot it from the hip, but then you also kind of, there's just no stop. So it, it takes a little bit of strength to kind of, you got to be careful. But my wife was able to shoot it. More recent than a dark, two and short, including Coca-Cola. That's what I'm worried. Oh, I know what set me off. Because I got a call today that my first race was canceled in June. Wife. The race in June canceled. And That's I, why you were irritated. I was irritated over that. And uh, they already crammed the rest of the races in this like two month period. So I guess there's gonna be another one crammed in there. I, I, I'm gonna literally live at a racetrack for two to three months. So after the first two races, it gets old, just so you know. <laughs> It gets old. Take notes when it comes to firearm purchases. Always better to ask forgiveness than permission. Uh, what would would my wife, big rig, see you? <laughs> In other words, he's saying bye is easier to ask forgiveness than permission. That's what he's saying. You see what he's saying? That's not how it works. Here's how it works. <laughs> Before you go buy the gun, first thing, first, not me, but this is the first thing I want you to do is go out in, in the kitchen and go in your wife's purse and get your balls out of it. <laughs> <laughs> then you come home with the gun. Tell them, wife, tell them this is how it'll go down. Tell them. <laughs> come home with the gun. And she goes, oh, I don't know about that. And then you tell her, if I wanted your opinion, 
I would have gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, pan the camera up a little bit so we can see the distance between your head and the upper bunk. It's, go ahead, look. There's a lot of room. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm straight, so like, there's, there's that much. Yeah, and I have, because I'm not as big as him. I had quite a bit. Yeah. My broken finger. Do you have to crouch in yours, Robbie? Oh, livestock for a living. I was robbed in Nashville, Tennessee four years ago, so I keep an AR-15 in the truck at all times now. Wow. Uh, I only delivered in Nashville once. Down Downtown Nashville, too. I, I was... I was nervous, but I was... Better stay out for a week extra. <laughs> nah. Nah, I'll be home... Wednesday night, hopefully. If the... The trucking load gods, everything works to plan, which happens how often? never yeah. so and I'll be teeing off Thursday morning yeah Daniel must just got the alert on the Life 360 about my phone so where do you charge your phone yeah this one that I'm looking at is going dead it's pretty close but it hasn't died yet 9% it's getting there and that'll mean how long have we been on here God damn, two hours? Has it been two hours? Is that what that says? One hour, 50... Oh, 81 minutes, 82 minutes. What's he saying? I duck down to get in the booth if the top is down. Uh, this one's fixed. It, that was an option to get it to go up and down. I didn't care. My wife says it's hot here today, 90 degrees. Good thing we got central air, right? Robbie says he's 6'1". How tall are you? Six. Six foot? I'm 5'11", three quarters. Yeah, we're, we're pretty we're close. We're pretty close. Yeah. So that means feasibly... Now, what do you weigh now? Uh, 250. So I was like 230, almost 235 when I started. So it's like, I'm in the high 170s now. You gonna get to the 170s? I wanna get to 180 to 190. That's, That's the goal? Yeah. And I get yelled at, I'm too skinny. I'm too skinny. So I started eating ice cream again. The AR-15 is one of the worst home defense weapons. You don't want something like that will go through the intruder in the wall and your loved one. An AR-15? Yeah. Well, I'm not kidding. It's a it's a 12 gauge shotgun. It looks like an AR. Oh, tell me, tell Scotty. I'm telling him. And I already have shotguns, so I just thought it was cool. I mean, that was it was cool. I went there to look at pistols. So I was gonna buy a pistol. And after I was there, I was like, I really don't know if I want a pistol. Can you feel the extra power you get when you punch the button on the turbo compounding engine? Can you feel a change in power? No. And where they say that, really, what the turbo compounding, where that comes into play, that, well, that extra 50 horsepower is is supposedly supposed to give you maximum torque at 900 rpm but i gotta tell you this thing when you're heavy and you're going down to 900 rpm it's struggling so i always manually downshift it to keep it around 1200 rpm and it pulls right up the hills pretty good at 1200 but down around nine where they're saying it's max max uh or peak torque 
I think they're full of crap. Big Houston, I'm at 215. God damn, you're that heavy? You don't look like you're that heavy. Any bullet will go through a quarter inch drywall. Jason Perry. My house is all brick and mortar though, so I, I don't think there's there's not very many walls in that house that aren't cement. So hurricane and tornado comes through. It'll take the roof and whatever else, but the walls should should you know who knows should still be there and we're not in the floodplain so we don't have to worry about storm surge what about this judge revolver is 410 and a 45 colt uh what was i looking at wife i was looking at a nine millimeter a glock and then uh has two names. Six Hour. The thin ones, not the one with the, the bigger clips. Cause you know, I don't I don't need to carry well A, you're not allowed to have more than ten in a clip, right? In a concealed well, carry? No, it depends on what state. Mine's, so I've got I've got two magazines. One's uh fifteen, the other one's a thirteen, it's double stack. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't want the double stack because I was figuring if I can't kill you in five shots or get you off me in five shots, 15 isn't going to do it. But you never know. Might have been that 15th bullet. The higher the RPM, the more torque your truck puts out, bottom line. Right, but that's not what their statistic or their... Uh, The sheet, you know, when they sell it to you, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Their spec sheet. That's not what they have on there. They're saying peak torques at 900 RPM. I was like, yeah. And even after driving, I was like, yeah, that's not true. But I don't know. I haven't had a dyno, so I couldn't tell you for sure. But it'd be interesting to put it on a dyno. Yeah, there are 120 volt outlets on this. They're all over this truck. Yeah. 10 rounds for hunting yeah the, there's you know it, it depends on the state like the gun that I carry is illegal in certain states because of the capacity only 10 rounds for hunting oh man that reefer just kicked out full he must have ice cream in there yeah, I was ice cream or frozen meat Austrian gun. Austrian gun. Oh, what, the clock or the six hour? Oh, there was a, he showed us a couple other ones too. They have, they got some amazing guns in the market now. They have some nine millimeters for Chicksford or purses that are the size of your hand. Yeah. Yeah, my wife's got a, uh, the Taurus G2S. It's got seven shots, and I think it's pretty small. And it's not even like the the really small ones, like the 380s. It's not even like that. You know. I have 500 horsepower, 1650 torque engine, and like the looks of the Bobo. Just curious about the 455 1850 turbo compound engine. Will pull just as good. I don't know. I never drove the 500. A Volvo? You're talking about the old one, the D12? I mean, this one pulls fine. I mean, I'm usually... When, when I'm grossed out and I'm going up the big mountains and you, you see other trucks, the Freightliners and even the Peterbilts, and you could tell they're grossed out too because they're going slow, right? So, and I'm like 78,000 pounds, so I'm just assuming they're somewhere around the same because you can't be more than 80, so they got to be about the same. And I'll pull them up the hills a good 10 mile an hour faster than they're going. Wow. 
So I think the slowest, like my Freightliner, man, you get up some of those big hills and that thing would, you'd be going 25 mile an hour. <laughs> and this thing, I think the slowest, going up the, the, the Hatchapi Mountains, coming out of Cali, I mean, that's an 18 mile straight climb. And some parts are 6%. And I think the slowest I went up that was at, at 78,000 pounds was 40 mile an hour, 42 mile an hour. So that's the slowest. But what I like about it is the Jake break going down those hills in, in this Volvo is spectacular. You actually have to shut it off. You could come to a stop going down a big grade. And never touch the brakes. The shot show in Vegas, you ever heard of that? Yeah. I bought a twenty two long rifle that looks like a credit card. Huh. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. My haul cows. They load me to the max all the time. My Peterbilt C sixteen Caterpillar six hundred horse two twenty two fifty torque. Nice. Sorry that you haul cows. You're one of them guys that we don't like because we can smell you before we see you. What's going on, Provost? Just purchased my first Volvo. It's a 2019 BNL 860. Any advice on what to keep an eye on? And where can I get an APU installed that won't break the bank at 10K plus? I don't know. I put. I put my own on. I bought it from the distributor. I've got the carrier, which is a little louder than the uh, tri pack, but it's carrier is going to be cheaper than the tri pack. Yeah, tri pack you're looking at 13. Carrier is going to be about 10. Installed. So. And I bought it because of the. It's a generator. Yeah, it's more of a generator style. No, it is a generator. Yeah. And a and a tri pack is an engine with a with an automotive AC compressor that Yeah. You know, it's just like having another system that your truck already has on there. Where this has like uh, underneath Steve is a uh, like a window unit, you know, type air conditioner heater thing and it just powers it. It's just a generator. And it uh you can set it to if your batteries get below 12 volts to turn on and charge the batteries, it'll turn itself on, run for 45 minutes. So if, when you're out of the truck for two, three weeks, you get in, the batteries are charged. So that's why I liked it. I think I paid a little over seven grand for it in the box, but I put it in myself. Yeah, so. You, and I plumbed it all in the factory ducts. Do you like that? Oh yeah, that was freezing in here earlier. Yeah, I'm kind of crazy like that. I carry, a running away 22 magnum five rounds i'm thinking not not to use anymore next time i get home going to bring me a better round the problem with 22 that i find is is not the impact but the reliability um you know 22s tend to jam a lot unless you're using a 22 revolver then you know that that'd be fine but i think the ammo is just too inconsistent find is a pistol is a EDC for a trucker. I'm not sure what you're asking there, HR. EDC? What's that? Everyday carry. Oh. Are you an everyday carry? Huh? You an everyday carry now? Well, I feel so safe. I got CZ Top and he's packing. <laughs> you smell my cows? I'm normally long gone through the wind by the time you try to find that smell. <laughs> I don't know. You ever? If you ever haul with me, I haul like you guys haul. I'm not that guy doing 60 mile an hour. Gregory says his is a revolver. I, I want to try out a 22 revolver. I think it'd be cool, but you know, the, the whole caliber question is, you know, whatever you can be accurate with. I mean, 
know, hopefully you never have to use it. You know, you always hear, well, you know, you shoot a meth head, you know, 15 times and he doesn't go down, so you need a 45. And you know, if, especially if you're in your truck. If anybody, if I, if I ever have to use it, it's going to be inside my truck. And a 22 is fine. I get 22. You better hit a vital organ. You're just gonna piss me off all the more. Uh, considering the truck stops and rest stops, do you feel better with one than without one? Good question. Um, I don't know. I've always had situational awareness, with or without it. And the thing that you got to be careful is if you start packing that you don't have the what they call the puffy chest syndrome. Like I can accomplish anything, you know. Like, and so I, I tend to stay out of the trouble. I really don't carry it through the truck stops. I really don't. Um, it's 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 mainly in the truck. At home, I carry it now because Springfield's gotten some. You know, it's it's had a few issues here lately. But as far as in the truck. You know, or the truck stops, I really don't care. It just depends. It, you know, it depends on the spot, you know. If I'm in the rest area, and, you know, and it seems peaceful, you know, it's just situational awareness. You know, there's really not a yes or no question on that, or answer on that. Yeah, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to run the truck when you're, running the uh, inverter when you're running the microwave TV and all that stuff and it has its own 120 volt plug that is not you know I don't have the I have the generator charging the batteries to the truck and the inverter runs off the batteries to the truck and it has its own separate yeah, it has its own plug separate power source yeah that I put underneath here and I have a little short extension cord so I can plug that into the block heater because it it pumps coolant through there and I can heat the oil too. Yeah. But I didn't have to do that this year because yeah, I didn't run when it was cold. Well, not that much. I was, well, I was in Florida. I, I stayed south. One saw EDC guys sit down and his pistol went off in the car. Luckily, missed him and family. Perry, that that is that's why the holster is just as important. You know. Yeah, I'd be worried about that. But it, from what I've learned, it would it would take an act of I don't know. I don't I don't think it's as easy set off as, I mean, I don't know if, if even a double, double action revolver, you know, I don't know, I, I don't see, it's not like you can drop the gun and it'll go off. What I was worried about was, you know, I, I have to get, a holster goes in here because I'm so freaking skinny, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And that goes against one of my rules to life. My, my A number one rule of life, no sharp objects next to my penis. Yeah. And that thing could go off and, I mean, it's highly unlikely, but it's not a, it, it definitely won't happen if you're not carrying it there. Right. Right? Uh, so. Well, there, there's tricks to that trade. I, I really don't go over a lot of that stuff because number one, I'm, I'm learning myself, but then they, they will demonetize your channel like hardcore. We'll be down to five percent. This battery dies. Well, yeah. We should go eat. Yeah, we should. Some of us still have work to do. Besides, I gotta use the bathroom. Okay. All right, we're gonna eat. Peace. Bye, Snore Lord. Bye, wife. See you, everybody.